choose uh, marketing, entrepreneurship, innovation, courses, sales, business law, that's all the things I have, how to open your companies here in Europe, <coughs> consumer behavior, so this is more also focused on marketing, and very important, which we tell our students all the time as well. Those students who want to take a master degree, Academy profession degree. Okay. So uh, it's like a sausage degree in the US. Okay. Basically, it's a two years, we call it basic, basic start. So uh, it's like an associate's degree. Like an associate, yes, exactly. Uh, I don't want to dig in into higher education because tomorrow, Nils, the rector, is supposed to give up. Oh, is mm -hmm. it today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's today, actually. At one o'clock, Nils is supposed to come and give you a lecture about education system. And he is the one who knows more about political situations, so you can bump him with this question. Uh, because he's an ambassador for all academies uh, when we go up there into a political arena. So he knows the best. So, as I was saying, those who want to take master's degrees in Denmark later on, they have to do statistics and economics electives. And we tell our students all the time in the second semester that please remember that later on it's going to be hard, you have to pay for those courses. The different, why, why they should do it? Because difference between academy, again, and the university, we teach more professionals. We have one semester of internship, and that's where our students would lack some courses to get to master's degree later. We give them this opportunity to get those courses, but you just have to decide on AP degree to do that. So this is quite intensive course, I've done it as well, uh, but they just have to have it. And I mean, you can say to your students, but we say it also all the time to them, that please remember that you should do it. And this is the third semester, and as we talked about, they have opportunity to go abroad, so they don't have to go through all this hustle here if they go into a if they go in abroad. So on second semester they they have a deadline when they can apply. It was first of October. Everybody decided if the next semester they take exchange, they don't have to think about their things here. Okay. And uh, admission requirement. Uh, so admission requirement is that the student has to have ex education equivalent to a Danish upper secondary education. How to understand if your student has equivalent to a Danish upper secondary education? Thank God we have a very good Ministry of Higher Education that made a website, that's a web page that's called International Qualifications for Entry to Undergraduate Programs in Denmark. What you do, you go here, you choose a country, <laughs> and here's written what you have to have and where you need. So you need to also read here that it says minimum, minimum requirements for admission to Danish academy profession and professional bachelor pro programs. Which means if you want to send a student with this qualification to a university, they will not be accepted. Because with this one, they will have to do some extra uh, or uh, foundation programs as well. But for academy profession, it's fine. Let's check it out. Let's take Nigeria. Okay. Be the same it will be the same for Nigeria. Yeah. A, bit, a bit more. And here's the explanation what needs to be you see, showing nine subjects pass, including at least six different and three A levels and so on. So there is different explanation. It's just so you know that our minimum requirements taken from government. So if somebody doesn't have nine subjects pass and they have eight, sorry, you can talk to me as much as you want, but I we were not allowed to accept that. That's okay, just so how that differs from country to country in terms of qualification. Yes. Yes. From yes. Yeah. yes. Let's check last year. Does that also apply to the program to program? It's because for AP. Uh, AP. Yeah. It's for AP programs. Okay. AP programs. And we're talking now only so about AP. So for any AP program, the entry requirements should be the same, except for for some programs you take maths, and for others you won't. 
for us to do. I will move to that. that that slide there, for example. This is the minimum requirement for admission to Danish undergraduate program. Because, you know, it changes, like they have different paperwork. You see, they even write from 1991 to 1999, they, they could have had this kind of, so they, they even monitor different diplomas, not only the latest ones, but that were before, uh, for example, let's say Czech Russia. So this one, they need to have access. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. But if they, if they got their edu secondary education in 1998, we had 10 years of schooling, which means that they missed in two years, because in Denmark education is 12 years. That if, if I receive a diploma from Russia that somebody who finished in 1997, then they have to have minimum two more years in higher education. All right. Well, I'm just gonna give you this link. You can yourself check your country and check what uh, what is here. But unfortunately, in Danish version, there is much more. <laughs> so you're also welcome to check the Danish version and translate it. But I don't think you need it. It's only for us needed because every country, European country, for example, when I receive from Slovakia, I receive grades as well, and I have to transfer, calculate. Slovakian average to Danish average, <laughs> myself. And they, they are right how to do it, so it's, it's a mess. <laughs> but w we learn how to do it. And just for you to know that this is the minimum and we cannot accept below that. That's just how it is. Um, and it's good that it's transparent, you can find it all the time. Just we're not making them up, they, they are always on the website. For marketing management, it's also important that uh, many of you already know about this. Mathematics B level that represented that the student had 250 hours of mathematics in their last three years of high school. This is very important for them. Right? And because you, you could see how much economics and statistics students have. If they didn't study mathematics in the high school, it will be very hard for them. Um, almost not possible. Or some done business economics. I know that in Romania, for example, there, there is a bit of a problem with that because some schools, they don't study mathematics in, in high school. So most if, it's, if it's high school, mostly they do, but very often because we don't have uh, 60 minutes um, classes, sometimes it's right under this kind of level. And I often, uh, I had um, a student who had less and I was advising to go to a different kind of course because we couldn't make the 250 because she was uh, studying in a, in a philology or something, yeah. like language class. So the mathematics level was very, very low. But what is related, and they often ask, is that how important is mathematics, like how much the program will focus on mathematics because very often they want to come to marketing or business for like not really the mathematics part, but they imagine it will be something uh, different. Yeah, but then you can show them the curriculum, and as I showed, it, you could see how much, how many CPS points, uh, how many workloads spent on economics, financial management. I, uh, you can ask the resident later how hard it is to study financial management and statistics and so on. But for me, it was hard. I'm not a mathematical person at all, and I have a lot of math at school. I studied a physics and mathematics class. So, uh, hard, yeah? Uh, are these academic hours or regular hours? Uh, regular hours. And then they also had to study English in 210 hours in, in high school as well. And uh, for international students, they also have to provide the certificate that answers to um, IELTS 6.5 or higher. Mm -hmm. Also, so you mentioned high school, so that would be last year, three years? Three years. Three years. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to make this PowerPoint very messy. Mm -hmm. Later on, you get more information about more details. Mm -hmm. It's just the basic what you need to know, but otherwise we're going to look at the slide where you cannot read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And um, I asked around the students what kind of projects lately they've done with what kind of companies. Uh, I don't know if you know. It's not from your, it's from the third semester. So it's the third semester, uh, marketing management students. So this is the co uh, companies that they've done real projects. So our company has been here, or our students were taken to a company for a briefing and do a project. So um, for example, this one, Lego, they do a playground. It was an innovation project. Our students had to come up with idea about new ways of uh, kids to play, think, and how to make a playground more interesting. Sometimes we think like, what kind of it to do with marketing? But it's innovation. They have to come up with idea how to do it. And then they have to sell this product to them. Swiss Bank, I think it was more about financial. So it's one of the <coughs> biggest Danish banks. Uh, they went uh, as a big group to the branch, and the manager briefed them, and then they had to write a report. Um, Trademark sales, textiles, they produce the underwear. They're located very close. It was a marketing project as well. Um, well, Echo, everybody know Echo. They do a lot of, they take a lot of our interns. They do a lot of different projects. And it was exam uh, um, assignments for, for our students. So they, they got this 20 page of paper and they had to solve this problem for Echo and that's how they stand. So. Just because we always talk about, yeah, we do, we do, we do a lot of with businesses. I just wanted to show you what kind of businesses we work with. And then tuition fees. Um, well, as you know, European citizens, they don't have to pay tuition fee for the program. And for non-Europeans, it's um, 68,000 a year. It's around 9,200 euros uh, per year for the program. Um, Sorry? The Euro equivalent? Oh, yeah. But, well, we take our tuition fees in Danish crowns anyway. So uh, that's why if I tell you now that it's this much, it's not going to be <laughs> exactly precisely. And how many positions of three thousand for? None of you? Now? Five. Yeah. Eurasia business management. This is something that's very popular among European students lately. Um, in particular, some countries. Um, this program consists of two parts. First, they come and study two years with SAP marketing management as we just talked about. And then they go to for two years to our partner university in Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai Beijing University of Accounting and Finance, and they get the Bachelor in Business Management in Shanghai. So they get two diplomas. They get our AP degree diploma, basically, in Denmark, and then after two years, they do their Bachelor in Business Management there. And the uh, curriculum in Shanghai consists of a mix mixture of mandatory Chinese language courses and business-related subjects. Um, I interview students the programs and I always ask, ask about them how sure they are about this because you all know China is uh, and you lived in China you know, so this mm -hmm. it's a big culture shock and uh, I, I always say it's only for those who really really focus on that and who are really interested in this and ready to learn Chinese language and so on because in the Euro Asia first year will consist of almost main of learning the language, like almost a full year. And then they have some business courses inside. And then the second year will be fully uh, about the subject management, marketing, business related subjects. So um, and to be honest, not all students that enroll into this program in the beginning actually go to China. Mm -hmm. So now I have 40 students following this program. I'm 100% sure that maximum 10 of them actually will, will go there. Well, some of them like being in Denmark. Some of them want to stay and proceed to our bachelor's program. Some of them decided just to move to even another country. That's fine by us. So we don't bound them, just so you know that if they follow this program and then in the middle they decided that unfortunately this is not for me, it's, it's all right. 
they, they can always proceed with us, go to another place or anything. So they don't have to have to. We're not going to ship them to China. <laughs> it's not that. And admission requirements are exactly the same because we're taking them for AP marketing management with us. And then they don't have to reapply or anything. They just transfer to China because they're our partner institution. But there's a difference with tuition fees. So um, all students, no matter for the citizenship, in China they will have to pay approximately 19300 per year for their study period in Shanghai. Well, it's what, around 2,800 euros for the full year. That's not so much. Like, if you think about prices in general, that's, that's not a lot. Uh, but like I said, uh, students have to be really interested in the Asia business. I wouldn't want a student not to have a good time. I was in China for two weeks, it was enough for me. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't say I don't like it, I just say I wouldn't want that. But I invited a student from this program on our, um, for, uh, for Wednesday. So you can ask her questions. And uh, I know that she actually wants to move back to China. Mm -hmm. So you will ask her what's so interesting about this, how she lives there. And so What's she from? She's from Slovakia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the students are getting undergraduate at that time. Sorry? The students are getting that bachelor's degree? Yes. From both? And we just mm -hmm. I'm very happy that we reopened this program in English again, Multimedia Design and Communication. What is this program about? So this is something for those who are interested in web development and graphic design, concept development, um, IT systems, and so on. So this is a lot of things together, because they also study business as well. Um, it's very popular program among European very popular, had a big uh, competition for the places this time. Uh, because also, in many countries, this program, if they finish it, it means that it's almost job secure position. Because nowadays, graphic designers, web developers, they, they always find a job. They can work freelance, they can work in any companies. And in Denmark, it's also very, very popular. And um, this is some programs that they learn how to use. Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign Plus. They learn um, developer language as well, HTML, I don't even know what it is. I'm not an I think I don't know how to use computer. <laughs> so, uh, but it's super interesting because students, they don't even have books mainly on this program. Everything done on projects, everything hands on, basically. They work all the time on the computers and groups and so on. So, the structure of the program, so the uh, first base of design and programming of digital user interfaces, programmers or uh, digital content. On semester two, they just take it level up, the same content. And then semester three, they have elective modules. So, like I said, first year students understood what they like more, web development, or they want to be more marketers, so they can choose the direction. or they go into web development or to digital marketing. Their choice. Or, of course, they have a possibility to take an exchange semester as well. But I talked to a program manager and he said, to be honest, it's not so many students would like to do it because they really enjoy it here and they want to proceed the full time on multimedia design. He said it's a year that they send two students maximum on exchange, otherwise students stay here in the house. And as we know, they have to go to internship, they have to write the final project as well. But for these students, it's much easier to find internship, to be honest, uh, even for English speaking, because it's 
everywhere. Um, I tried to ask about what they, what last um, companies they worked with, but then I remembered that this program was closed for two years and we reopened it in English now. Uh, but um, our program manager has scheduled minimum 20 companies to work with during a year. Um, and like I mentioned, all teaching based on projects and in group work. The last project they've done was for our own, own local municipality about digital interface, how people use them, the website, and how easy it is in like the case and so on. I will also have one student that follow in this program. Uh, so you can ask him questions, he can answer better. Admission requirements almost the same as AP marketing, but uh, I don't know why. Mathematics <laughs> level is lower, so they have to have just 125 hours. Uh, yeah, mathematics C level, one 125 hours during the last few years. If they send, if it, it's a plus. If they never done anything before like that, it's all right for us because they study from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What I'm concerned about is that now I, I see that it's quite much also IT-based program. Uh -huh. And a lot of our students think that it's more design and more artistic something. Mm -hmm. And because of the mathematics level is lower, and maybe they don't have the IT background from school. Mm, does this create any kind of... Well, but then they should, that's why we brief you on that, what's this program about. Because I had this problem, I had a student that came to an agency, to this program, when all documents are fine, and that's why we still do interviews. Mm -hmm. We are the only one, I think, institution left that do interviews in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, UCL probably do, do it? They do, they do. Only uh, UCL, uh, and no, only uh, with first priority students. Yeah. And right. yeah, we do it with everyone. So I spent uh, quite a few hours <laughs> uh, in uh, April and May interviewing 500 students uh, on Skype uh, because I mean you I never know maybe the priority was four, but I have students sitting in my classroom that <coughs> that they thought their IBA was their seventh priority. <laughs> so um, I, when I done interview the student, I asked them so. What, what is your idea? Why did you apply for multimedia design? I want to be a designer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this program much focused on IT and so on. Like, that's why we have a website to read about what the program you is see, about. Can I me? So what she's saying is, it's more IT background. Yeah. But the schools are not more IT oriented. Where they have to come from. So for example, let, let me, let me, for example, if the, the student decide that I want to be an IT student, like if, I ha if I have to go through senior high school, I'm not, I will come out They don't have to. That's that what I it. answered. They don't have to be. So they can have a diploma in mm -hmm. IT and apply for this. If they have a, a mm -hmm. diploma. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, a national diploma. That's, that's fine as well. But what we're saying is that they don't have to have an IT background at all. Right. It's mostly if they if they don't ever want to do IT, this is not the yes, exactly. Because but we had the problem the students they think that it's a design. Yeah. They want oh, to okay. be just designers. They don't. Yeah. They don't. Oh, all right. uh, because the, the name I understand the name of the program, the multimedia design and communication. But this mm -hmm. is a national name of the program. We cannot change that. Yeah. But the, does the student have that IT background? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They can that we have to still have the WASI. If they, yeah. well, if they, if we would normally want to see a secondary school diploma, yes. If they have a national diploma. No, they have to have secondary yeah. school diploma. We don't look at his diploma because admission requirement is his upper secondary education. Yeah. If he has a diploma already, good for them. But the problem with non EU will be in Denmark, there is a limitation in degrees. That if a student. Diploma is equivalent to what he is coming here. And if he has done exactly the same and he is coming for the same, there's going to be a question from the embassy. Why? Mm -hmm. if, you've already ha if you already have this level of degree, why don't you go for a bachelor or master level? <coughs> why are you coming to do it one more diploma? 
Okay. But so they don't have to have an IT background. It's just that this is a programming degree, not a design degree. So they have to know what they're going into. It's not about yeah. background. Just secondary school with regular, regular run-of-the-mill subjects. No IT required. They have to know how to use a computer, obviously. Uh, they need to have one because they'll be doing programming. Um, but they need to have an interest in programming and in IT. But if not, this is not the degree. Uh, the question is like uh, 125 hours of mathematics in three hours. At least in Romanian education system, you can have it even in a social sciences class because it's quite wide. But you might have not much knowledge of IT. Like, can they cope? Like, do you start it at a very basic level, or they start at a very basic level? Mm -hmm. And students who are interested in programming usually, you know, there's there's U Academy and everything else. They've usually already done this. They don't need to learn that part in school. Mm -hmm. Their their interest can come mm -hmm. from somewhere else, um, and their knowledge can come from somewhere else. But it's just the minimum requirements of just the secondary school. Also, like remember that we're still hit by this that we have number of places, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have, and like I said, there was a competition, mm -hmm. which means that that's why. Some students send portfolios. Mm -hmm. Some students, uh, when they talk to me, also, oh, I've done this project. I've been on the Erasmus exchange. I've done, I don't know, I've done my own app and stuff. Then, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I would of course take students who've done something mm -hmm. beforehand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but if a student have a very great motivation to do something, some of them were saying, I've never done it myself, but uh, my parents work at graphic. Mm -hmm. I want to learn it and so on. I, I, I'm not going to restrict anyone. Mm -hmm. to do it. They do it on very basic level. Mm -hmm. I don't know why mathematics hours is lower than for business degree. Again, this is a minimum requirement that we get from up there. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. But you can tell students they don't have to be afraid. And also, we have different levels of students. Others, that's why I say find a group. The others can teach you a bit. Mm -hmm. We have quite experienced ones, actually, from school who are gaming a lot. They can make their own app, app all the by themselves. They can just leave them on that if they like. Can you have a question? Do you, do you need to see some subject okay. in the RY results? Just English and, uh, English and, and math, that's it. Yeah. And so then the interest oh, can come from something that they've done online or, or just that they're very interested in it. That, that, that will come out in the interview. But there's no other requirement, no other minimum requirement than their secondary school uh, English and maths. Oh, English and maths. Sorry? No. No, if they, if they finish their writing at 15, there will be questions about what happens and what's going to happen if they're here. But there's no, there's no minimum requirements, there's no, there's no maximum age if they're 50 and they really want to do this and they have a very good story about why they want to do it, then no, we're, we're, we, don't, we don't mind. We're not, we don't discriminate on age or anything like that. One last question. Yeah. What about if this student probably has been seen wife or her wife like four, five years back? That's fine. There might be a question from the embassy or from us, like, what have you done in the meantime? But if there's an answer to that, you know, if, if they come to the visa interview and say, okay, so what have you been doing the last five years? I was in jail. Probably no reason. <laughs> <laughs> but if their answer is, you know, I'm that's working, my, that's I came out of school, I didn't know. So I started university when I was 22. Um, I did it in my own country, so there were no real questions. But 